Hello friends! I am so excited you are here! We are going to learn how to paint sea turtles today and I wrote a little story to go with it. So you are on the Create with Crystal YouTube channel. Um, my name's Crystal. I'm an artist, author, professional organizer, and mother. And I will be posting videos every single Thursday. So like and subscribe and comment, ask your questions, upload your pictures so I can critique them and help you become a better artist. You are going to have so much fun. It's really fun to be an artist. And I want you to be able to take a white canvas and create whatever you want. So um, I am showing you this. You can paint this picture pretty small. I'm going to paint it about 16 by 20 right here. And um, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you an incredible tip so that you learn how to become an artist on the go. Because a lot of us are super busy and we need to figure out how to be an artist when we don't have all the time in the world. So it's going to be so much fun to paint with you. I'm excited to teach you how to paint an easy turtle painting. So there's 15 steps. Don't get overwhelmed. I've made it into little bite-sized pieces. So we are going to start with step one. I know we kind of talked about our um, supplies, but this painting is going to be a painting of glazes. We're doing acrylic so it dries quickly between each glaze. So we want to use matte medium so our glazes can be transparent. And we want to use, don't use tons of paint on each layer. You want to use matte medium with some paint so that every layer can be seen like you have by the time this is done there'll be about five layers and it'll be like think of it as five stained glass layers making this beautiful color by the end so that is what we're doing so um, you're going to need a picture of some reference i would get uh, some pictures of some turtles and some pictures of bubbles um, because you want each layer to have its stained glass layer hold together and then you put the next layer and the next layer, okay? So those are the things, the supplies you need. Okay, the second step you do is you take a pencil and you draw a messy sketch on. And you just look at your reference and you just draw on your picture of some seaweed on the right, some the mama sea turtle, the baby sea turtle, and then some coral on the left. When you draw your coral, try to make your circles kind of interesting. Don't just make them very boring, repetitive, same shape, same size. Make some big ones and some small ones and some high ones and some low ones. You know, create some nice ovals. And um, I kind of messed up my sketch and so it's fine. I didn't erase it or anything completely. The My teachers always said beauty marks are good and so just let the pencil line stay there and just keep going. By the time that I finish the painting, uh, you can't even see the sketch lines that didn't get used. So uh, uh, step three is you do a CAD red light wash. So you take your spray bottle and your CAD red and you put kind of thicker paint at the top, spray it and let it drip down in a really awesome watercolor wash and then blow dry it. Step four, you use the liner brush and you draw in with the burnt sienna or iron, red iron oxide. You can get this at Nova Color. I don't know where else to get red iron oxide, but um, you can do your wonderful sketch. And I love this color because it's transparent. It's amazing. You don't have to mix matte medium with this. It's just already transparent. So trace your sketch and just try to be bold. If you look like you're like scared and weak, it's like people can tell you're not having fun. But if you just say, I'm going for this, yikes, woo, you know, and you just have a lot of fun with your lines, people can tell you're having fun even if it's like, oh, that doesn't look right. It's like, it'll probably be consistently funny and it will work. So just be bold, get that line drawing painted quickly. Okay, step four 
that was the um, paint your sketch. Now step five, all the next five steps, we're going to be using a large fan brush. So this is the fan brush. This is a hog hair fan brush. So it's got this, the brush is really strong. Um, it's not just like weak and flimsy like a watercolor fan brush. This is a acrylic oil strong fan brush and it's amazing. We're, we can do so many things with this. You can blend smooth, you can paint textured. So step five is, is we are gonna take the um, fan brush and dip it in the iron red oxide, red iron oxide, and we're gonna paint in the seaweed and the coral. And you don't want your brush to be just gobs of paint. You want, what I did was I had a little bit of paint on one side, like this, and then a lot of water on this side. And then I kind of tapped it a little so I didn't have too much paint. And then I just tapped it, tapped it. And so I created areas where it's light, where it's dark, because you want to have interest and variety. You don't just want to have dark brown. You want to have light, dark, light, dark, okay? Um, now step six is you get a chip brush or the fan brush. This is the chip brush you get at Home Depot. And you make a glaze. And so I put, uh, matte medium in my lid right here and I pour a little bit in my lid and then I dip into the um, sage green or olive green and the yellow ochre and I make a glaze and I go and I put the darker green at the top we're creating a gradient darker green at the top and the yellow ochre towards the bottom and we want this to be thin. We want to have the red, cad red light coming through. So it's making a more interesting color. Okay, so then you can blow dry that. That's the next step. Step seven, blow dry. Step eight, we're gonna create another glaze. And this one's going to go turquoise, yellow, turquoise. So you get more matte medium again in your lid. And then you get some turquoise or you mix some turquoise with phthalo green and white and you put that at the top and then some yellow in the middle this is going to create your area of focus your focal point is the interaction of the mama turtle and the baby turtle and so we want the biggest contrast of light to dark be right around their faces so that's the yellow area and then turquoise again at the bottom okay and then step nine is you're going to put in some fun circles this is going to be kind of like, you know how sometimes when you see pictures that have a soft focus of plants and, and there's all these beautiful circles? Well, we're going to be creating kind of this, I call it luster. So you have a circle that's like medium green and then it's like a target. It goes medium green, lighter, and then light yellow in the center. So you've got these just little soft luster circles in the background just and I know this is probably the most overwhelming part but if you have this this is an amazing brush my favorite brush of all time it's the um, Filbert one inch brush from Zen Art Supplies you can get this whole set of brushes for $50 it's amazing but this brush does those circles perfect so you can have some medium, light, and then lightest. And you have these beautiful circles just pulsating through your picture, just, just looking so magical. And those, um, those aren't the bubbles. The bubbles we'll add later, but these are just the beautiful circles of soft focus in the background. Okay, step 10, you're gonna do a lime glaze um, coat just with probably the fan brush um, and matte medium again. Just do get some lime green over those turtles so their, their value needs to stand up different from the background. So hopefully you've got introduced enough yellow that over time we're gonna build up and make the turtles darker and the background will stay light, okay? We're building the layers in this beautiful stained glass underwater sea turtle painting. Okay, so then step 11 is we are going to dip our brush in some light yellow acrylic and you're going to 
Take your fan brush and put in the highlights. Put in the highlights in the sand, put the highlights in the coral, put the highlights in the seaweed, and you just kind of tap it lightly. Make sure that first you, you got some yellow paint, but you kind of tapped it off a little bit in your paper towel or t-shirt that you use to dry off your brush because you don't want so much paint that you lose all your beautiful stained glass layers. You want to keep some of those interesting layers so you're painting kind of dry, okay? Then, step 12 is we're gonna do a cad red light, cadmium red light glaze with matte medium over our two turtles. And you're like, wait, no, these turtles are gonna be green. Don't worry, they'll end up green, but we've gotta build the value. We've gotta make them darker, so they stand out from the background, okay? Then, step 13 is we are going to repaint in some of the details. We're going to paint in some bubbles, just throw in some cute circles that kind of go in a cute little arch or a cute little rainbow over the turtles. You're going to do the details like redraw the turtles, so we're building up their definition a little bit more because when we did glazes, it kind of made it lighter and so when we put in these the liner details again with this little tiny brush where to go oh here's one then it will rebuild and create definition again okay so bubbles and you put in the eye on the turtle things like that and then um you paint in some of like the earring on the little the mother turtle and her hat and things. And then we're going to do a green glaze. Step 14 is do a green glaze with matte medium with phthalo green, phthalo green. And so make sure that you use matte medium because you could just lose all your layers if you don't use matte medium or gloss gel. Or if you're really desperate, maybe you could use Mod Podge but I haven't really tried that very much. The matte medium and gloss gels better. Um, if you do buy this from Nova Color, it's Novaplex 235 matte medium is the one you'd buy. But that's if you buy, you know, like a large amount. Um, so then you want to, for your final step, write your signature and just give it some whatever it needs, some little finishy touches. And this is something that, you know, if you feel like your heart says, I need to add this, just follow your heart and do it, you know, because your painting is going to be somewhat different than mine. So follow your intuition, but um, just have fun. I, you know, you're going to learn a lot because you probably have never used matte medium and you're creating an underwater sea turtle paradise. Okay, my time-saving tip is fill up lots of sketchbooks. These are my sketchbooks, the ones I haven't lost, and I've got watercolor sketchbooks. I love these. They are so fun. So these ones are really nice because they have a spiral binding, and they just fit in your backpack or your purse really easily. And this is how I was able to kind of get a lot of hours in throughout my life is just painting on the go while I'm watching a basketball game, while I'm driving somewhere, you know. So these watercolor sketchbooks, I don't use watercolor. I use watercolor markers, Koi or Tombow markers. I love those. I'll do some videos on those. And then this is another sketchbook that I love just because it's nice and small. And so you just draw and write notes and ideas and then when you want to make a story or a fairy tale you're ready because you have your story ideas it's so exciting because when it's time to have ideas and you have to just come up out of thin air it's kind of tricky but if you just keep your ideas in your sketchbooks like so many of my stories have come from just i painted a picture like this sea turtle I painted it and I was like, I want a story to go with this. And then we made this amazing story that you get to hear. So that is my time-saving tip so that you can become an artist on the go. And please share and comment, 
like and subscribe to Create with Crystal.